Okay. Um, in the chat and also later on today, um, there will be um, a link to a survey. If you all can com complete that at the end of the meeting or later today or tomorrow, that would be great. Thank you so much. Please, um, if you have any questions, enter them in the chat and we will try and get to all the questions at the end of the meeting, unless Imani would like to uh, break it up in the middle and answer some questions in the middle. Just let us know as we go along. And um, I think that's it. Um, Amani, I'm gonna hand it over to you because there's so much important information to learn today. So thank you for being here. All right, uh, thank you very much, Debbie. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here at 8.15 bright and early on this Fat Tuesday. Um, happy Mardi Gras for any celebrators out there. Um, <laughs> um, and as Debbie said, we are going to be sharing a lot of information. Naviance is an excellent tool that's available to our students um, and parents, but there is a lot to learn with it. So I, I do encourage you to ask questions um, and I will, I will get to them at the end. Um, it's a little tough for me to monitor the chat and, um, and present. So, um, bear with me the internet is is a little choppy today so um bear with me folks uh, my screen should be sharing now so thank you everyone again um this is an introduction to naviance or naviance explained um so first as an overview naviance is your um, college and career and academic planning tool um, mcps has purchased this this technology for all um, all MCPS high schools and middle schools, actually, um, and made this available for students to be able to really see what's out there um, and to be able to imagine beyond just uh, what they might see on a day to day basis or what they um, or what they might have heard on TV or from friends, but to really explore all the possibilities. Um, with life beyond high school, as well as their academic planning um, while in high school. So we're gonna talk about all of the various features in Naviance and go through um, how it can really help your students. So at WJ, we use Naviance for uh, classroom guidance lessons throughout the school year um, on college and career related topics. It's also a communication tool that allows um, Ms. Gail Evans, our college and career information coordinator, uh, to push out all kinds of important information, information about internships, summer programs, um, scholarships, college visits, um, all kinds of opportunities available to our students. Um, we push those out through Naviance. So we encourage our students who are often on social media platforms to also be checking their email regularly so that they can see this, this important information. Um, students can also sign up for college representative visits um, in the Career Center. Uh, we use Naviance to help us um, in sending those college application documents for um, transcripts and letters of recommendation. Students can also build um, a colleges I'm thinking about list um, in Naviance that really helps to inform their counselor of schools of interest. Um, I use that list I know um, as opportunities come ac across my desk and I'm asked to uh, perhaps nominate a student for a scholarship opportunity or nominate a student for um, another opportunity, I'd like to know what their interests are. And so I look to that colleges I'm thinking about list. Um, I look at, at their resume um, in Naviance. I look at um, what I know about the student um, um, and what's available to me. So Naviance is a great way um, for students, parents, and counselor to interface. Um, also that student self-evaluation, parent questionnaire, um, and resume, as I, I mentioned, um, it not only helps us in identifying students for opportunities and nominating them for scholarships, but also 
um, and letters of recommendation um, as well, because we wanna be able to write the most detailed and personal letter on each student's behalf. Um, and I have been pleasantly surprised with what I've learned about my students from that parent questionnaire um, and from that student self-evaluation that I wouldn't have known about the student otherwise. Um, and so we use Naviance for, for all of those pieces. So students can access Naviance, but so can parents, okay? Um, and um, if you would like access to Naviance, please contact our College and Career Information Coordinator, Ms. Gail Evans, and she can get you set up if you're not already um, with your Naviance account. But students have a very easy way to access Naviance through clever.com. Um, Students can use their MCPS credentials that they use every day to log into their Chromebook and um, onto Canvas and Synergy. Uh, they can use those same credentials um, so they don't have to remember their Naviance username and password through uh, clever.com. So here is um, a screenshot of kind of the home page of Naviance. Um, and so up at the top is where you want to uh, kind of navigate using those tabs. Um, each of those tabs is going to take you to various resources uh, that are related to uh, courses, college and career, um, as well as the about me section, which has uh, the, the surveys and, and resume feature um, and your planner. So the high school course planner is one of the activities that we do with the students each year. Um, it helps us and it helps our students as, um, as they really start to develop those long-term planning skills that we know adolescents are still developing at this time. Um, and so this tool really helps them to think long-term um, from ninth grade all the way up to senior year, which courses they're going to take in order to meet high school graduation requirements um, and also gets them thinking about uh, college and career planning and how, how your high school courses set you up for, uh, for your future college major um, and life beyond. <clears throat> um, so also in Naviance, I wanna point out um, are the document resources. Here is where Students can find um, if they need an extra copy, um, an electronic copy of um, our college form, including the uh, transcript request form that they'll use senior year um, and their release of records form. Uh, both of those are required for our seniors when they're applying to colleges um, as we need parent permission uh, to be able to release transcripts um, and letters of recommendation to colleges and students submit one transcript request form per college that they are applying to. So on the home page um, is the careers tab, and there's a lot of great resources um, that I would really love to see students utilize much more um, for career planning. So we have our career interest uh, profiler, um, strengths um, and natural aptitudes surveys. Um, and these things really get students thinking about the possibilities that, um, again, sometimes students are exposed to limited information about all the careers that, uh, that are out there. And we know that in 2022, the workplace is changing um, and our career landscape is changing and opportunities um, and careers are going to be coming up in the next five, 10, 15, 20 years that don't even exist now. Um, and so we wanna encourage students to be exploring and really thinking about, about their, their future um, in, in ways that are limitless. Um, and also thinking about those possible careers that would be a good match for them that maybe they hadn't considered before. So one of, um, of the activities for our 10th graders, I believe it is, um, is adding 
my favorite careers and clusters. Um, so that is an activity that we will do with the 10th graders. Um, they complete the career interest profiler based on their strengths and they start thinking about um, career clusters. They don't have to know specifically what they wanna do with the rest of their lives at the age of 15 and, and 16. We don't expect that, but we encourage them to start thinking about what are some larger um, areas of potential interest for a future career. Um, and so we encourage students to really explore these um, and to click on the career titles for those in-depth descriptions of possible careers um, and the required training that would be involved, um, that education that you must have in order to earn that license or certification or job title that's desired, um, and of course, the average salary for those positions as well. So along with that, um, students can also research colleges in many ways. So by going to the colleges tab at the top, um, students will be able to find all of these various features. The college match, college lookup, and college search are various tools that allow students to um, find colleges of interest. Again, um, super match college search, um, I'm going to talk more about, but um, college match, I especially like because as students add colleges onto their uh, colleges I'm thinking about list, that college match then shows them which colleges students in past years who have also applied to a school of interest have applied to. So say, for example, I'm a student who is interested in UMD College Park. And I like UMD, I like the size, I like the programs they offer, I like, I like the campus feel. I'm interested in, um, in UMD College Park, but I don't only want to apply to one college, I'd like to apply to some other colleges and, and, and give myself options. But I, I, I'd like schools that feel like UMD College Park, schools that are, are similar to UMD College Park. So, so that college match is going to allow students to see um, which other colleges students have applied to who have also applied to UMD College Park. Um, and so you'll be able to get an idea of similar college campuses um, and similar schools of interest um, that students might not have known and, and be able to identify. Scattergrams is another great feature. I'm gonna talk more about that soon, but um, it allows students to see past ad admission trends um, and be able to get an idea of their potential, not guaranteed, but potential um, admission outcomes based on, on WJ students in the past who were accepted with a certain uh, GPA and um, SAT score or ACT score. So on that colleges page, and excuse me, I'm just gonna turn my phone down calls. Okay. Um, in the past, um, sorry, at the, at the top of the, of the colleges page, um, I had just showed you that screenshot. If you scroll down on the colleges tab, colleges page, you'll see at the bottom college visits. Um, and so here is where, um, Students will be able to find our schedule of college representative visits. Um, those take place in the fall of every year and juniors and seniors are able to attend our college visits um, and be able to uh, listen to those admission presentations, but also meet the representative for our area um, and, and be able to really match a, a name with a face um, when it's usually that admission representative um, who does the first read of their application and often decides um, if it gets a second read or um, even moves to committee. So I encourage students to attend those college visits um, and to check the schedule for schools of interest. So the college super match, uh, this is one of the activities that we will do with our juniors. Um, this allows students to 
select the criteria that are important to them in a college. Um, maybe your student would like to stay closer to home and maybe select colleges in Maryland, Virginia, and Pennsylvania. Or your student would like to go all the way to California and get as far as possible from home. We have some students like that too. Um, and so students can select their location preference. They can select um, their intended major to make sure that the colleges offer their major. I know I, I especially advise students um, who, are, who are interested in specific things like nursing or, or engineering to make sure that their college offers that program because not all schools offer every single major. Um, they can select um, admission trends um, and what the selectivity is of the college, um, diversity, institution characteristics, cost, student life, athletics, maybe your, your student wants to play um, college level athletics, um, um, and so they want to identify schools that have all of those things, all those factors that they're looking for. Um, so the supermatch college search allows students to be able to start to narrow down those over 4,000 colleges and universities um, that are out there uh, to be able to identify those eight to 10, 12 schools that they will um, ultimately apply to. Um, and so these are some of those other preferences. Uh, this is still um, on that college's page um, under advanced college search. Students can um, kind of look at those other criteria um, and enter in what they're looking for, maybe a two-year or four-year college, um, co-ed or single sex, public versus private, um, kind of really, um, again, narrowing down that list of, of over 4,000 colleges and universities that are out there and being able to identify the schools that they will actually apply to. So students can also research individual colleges, okay? So once they have explored broadly to be able to identify potential schools of interest, then it's time to really drill down on the individual schools and research and see what these schools have to offer. Um, and they can look at um, at things like the average net price, graduation rate, which is very important, um, acceptance rate, um, college overlap. Again, as I mentioned before, you can see those schools um, that students in the past who have applied to this school have also applied to, um, so you can identify other potential schools that are similar, um, and you can view that priority deadline. But I always I always recommend uh, to my students to make sure they are going directly to the school's website for those deadlines. Do not rely on third-party websites. Naviance is great, um, but it's really important to be going directly to the school's website to make sure you have the accurate information on those, um, on those deadlines. <clears throat> so here um, is a screenshot of the scattergram uh, that I mentioned before. Um, it is a scatter plot, so don't worry, your students are learning as we speak how to interpret a scatter plot. So um, if this is foreign to you, your student should, um, should be able to read this. So on the Y axis, the vertical axis, you'll see GPA, um, and it goes all the way up to 5.0 GPA. Um, and on the X axis, the horizontal axis, you'll see ACT scores there. And that is interchangeable with SAT scores. Um, either one can be posted and used in order to view past Walter Johnson students who have applied to these schools. Um, and the green check marks indicate um, past Walter Johnson students who have been accepted to the school. Um, and so seeing this sea of green check marks is gonna be able to indicate to a student that this is likely the range of, of GPA and test score that they would need um, in order to be a competitive applicant at this school. Um, and the red X's are going to show us uh, past Walter Johnson students who have been denied from the school. Um, and the purple squares with the diamond in the middle are students who have been waitlisted. Um, and so this gives 
students a prediction. Again, it's not a 100% guarantee that a student will be accepted, but it gives them a, a prediction of what are those um, kind of likely schools? What are those match schools for them? And then what are those reach schools? What are those, um, what are those schools based on, on GPA and test scores that, um, uh, that, the, that the student would likely be admitted to? So also, um, okay, so moving right along, we've gone through the courses tab, colleges tab, um, and, and careers tab, um, and we'll go back to careers. But on the about me tab is where students can find these surveys and parents as well. Oh no, the, okay folks, I do apologize. Our morning announcements have begun. Um, I'm gonna have to pause the presentation. I do apologize. The WJ Book Sale is back. That's right, cats. The Booster Club is hosting the WJ Book Sale on April 2nd. Doors open to the public at 9 a.m. So hold on. There is more. If you're in your SSL hours, go to the WJ website. You can find a union. There are multiple days and tons of SSL hours available. If you are available after school tomorrow, WJ Crew will be rowing, running, laughing, working out, and having fun. Come on, join us next week on the water and try it for free for March 7th. Don't want to see how nine, don't you want to see how nine people can sit in one boat without tipping it over? See what it takes to row on a nationally ranked crew team and not get wet. Fire rowing experience is not needed. Register for your free week at WalterJohnsonCrew.org. All advertisements must have two signatures on them, one from the club sponsor and another from an administrator. Posters hanging in the walls without proper approval will be removed. The legacy of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. In March 1968, Chicano students at five high schools in East Los Angeles went on strike to demand better education for students of Mexican ancestry. Los Angeles schools did not allow Latino students to speak Spanish in class and gave no place to study Mexican history in the curriculum. Guidance counselors also encouraged students, regardless of their interests or ability, to pursue vocational careers instead of setting their sights on college. Some students were placed in classes for the mentally challenged, even though they were of normal intelligence. As a result, the dropout rate among Mexican-American students was very high. Congratulations to the WJ DECA members who excelled at DECA State on Saturday. Allison Sue won first place in retail merchandising series. Sam Williams won first place in hospitality and tourism professional selling. Daniela Znam won second place in principles of business management and administration. Andrew Pichigan won third place in principles of finance. David Song won uh, third place in business finance. Please congratulate your students on their incredible achievements this year at DECA State and ask them how you can be a member of the WJDECA club. We meet on Fridays at lunch in room 110. All are welcome. The yearbook is looking for pictures of club meetings and activities. Please come to the mission to Becker Sure at 428160 and mcpsmd.net. Spectator Magazine is having an interest meeting on Wednesday, March 9th. Come to room 193 during lunch to learn more about producing our award-winning magazine and apply for leadership positions. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's all we got for you today, Wildcats. I'm Kiki G. And I'm the other disembodied voice. Have a great day. Okay, we're back, folks. Sorry about that timing. We do have uh, morning announcements every day um, after second period. So, um, 
you all get a little bit of a taste of what we get to hear from our students each day. <laughs> all right, so back to the survey. So here is where um, students can locate their student self-evaluation and parents can find the parent questionnaire. Um, again, we really do uh, take the time to read these and um, I encourage my students and parents to really uh, complete this in detail so that I can have um, more information for my counselor letter of recommendation. And some of the teachers also, um, also look at this for their teacher recommendations as well. Um, and so filling these out in, in, um, in detail um, is recommended in the junior year, um, in the junior year as, as we prepare for um, college application season in fall of senior year. <clears throat> okay. So um, on the About Me tab as well is where students can find the resume feature. Um, students often, um, often tell me that they are unsure of where to start, of um, what to include in their resume and how to format it. Um, and so Naviance has a great resume builder tool in here. Um, that prompts students on all of the areas that should be included in a high school resume, including work experience, education, volunteer service, extracurricular activities, awards and certificates, skills, music, um, athletic achievement, et cetera. Um, and as the students click through each area, they can um, update all of the sections, and then Naviance formats the final product for them. And that resume can be used um, in college applications, in job and, and internship applications, um, and also for their counselor and, and teacher as they are, um, are writing those letters of recommendation. So this is our, our timeline of, of Naviance activities. Um, in the ninth grade, our students work on, um, on the career cluster finder um, and their four-year course planner. Um, and there's a budgeting activity as well that's available to ninth graders. We don't do that um, in the homeroom class, but it is um, encouraged for our ninth graders. Tenth graders um, are doing that career interest profiler again um, um, and adding those three three career clusters um, to their favorites list. Um, these students are also working on the four-year course planner. Um, and we encourage the students to take a look at, at the Road Trip Nation videos as well that are on Naviance. Um, these are interviews with actual industry professionals um, as they describe their own career journey, how they came to um, be a part of a field um, and how they, um, how they determined that, uh, that that was the right career for them. Um, and also we encourage our 10th graders to start researching colleges. 11th grade um, is when we're really starting to um, kind of kick up the college research um, and preparation processes. Our 11th graders, um, do that super match college search that I mentioned earlier. Um, we share the scattergram feature with our 11th graders and encourage them to even start researching scholarships. They won't be able to apply for scholarships in 11th grade, but we encourage them to start researching them. Also the four-year course planner, that's an activity we do every year. Um, and we encourage um, our students as well to add add colleges um, to their colleges I'm thinking about list. Um, that's that prospective college list. And then late spring and summer to complete that student self-evaluation and resume in Naviance. In 12th grade it, um, is when our students are applying to uh, college and career opportunities. Um, and so we are encouraging them to really finalize their college list. I recommend uh, to my students to really finalize their college list in August at the latest September um, and be able to have that list in their Naviance account um, 
make sure that they have reviewed all of the documents in the document library and started submitting um, transcript request forms and their um, authorization for release of records. Sign up for uh, college representative visits in the fall. Um, I'd also like to note that this is a great opportunity um, for those colleges that are further away and maybe families haven't been able to travel in person to the campus, having that college representative come to Walter Johnson um, and present about the college is a great opportunity to learn more about schools that are further away. Um, in 12th grade is the time to be um, applying to colleges and making sure that students are tracking those requests um, and also applying to scholarships. <clears throat> and so that brings me to the end. Um, and I'm going to take a look now. We um, do have some questions. Some you've yes. answered in the talk as you've gone, but there are. Yes, yes. Um, thank you, Debbie. So uh, let me pick up where I've left off here. Um, okay, so um, a parent is asking about uh, the registration code um, that's provided by the just the district. Again, Ms. Gail Evans can give you that access code that you need to log log into Naviance. Please contact Ms. Evans, and she can help you um, log in there. <clears throat> um, I have a question in the chat from Ms. Carlos asking um, if Naviance shows student support services. I'm going to say no. Um, if you'd like to unmute and clarify the question, I think what the question is asking is maybe about tutoring services or, or other academic supports. And those would be things that the school counselor would be able to provide. Um, and Naviance is just going to focus on, on college and career planning. Um, and so if your child is in need of support, please contact your school counselor. Um, so we can assist with that. I don't know if Ms. Carlos wanted to um, expand on the question. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes, oh. I, I, I was just asking about um, um, schools that have um, support for, um, you know, uh, students um, neurodivergent students and um, uh, who need special accommodations, um, that sort of thing, if, if any of that information is included in Naviance. That would probably be on the school's website, right, Ms. Ladson? Whether or not well, the school itself provides it? Yes. Um, it would be nice for uh, Naviance to add that information, to be able to um, add it as one of those criteria, because that is something that um, our students are looking for, what kinds of um, accommodations and supports schools have, uh, colleges have um, available. Maybe the student um, is getting support here at the high school level. Um, and so you're researching as part of your college search process, what supports are gonna be available at at the next level. I, I understand the question better now. So um, that is not available in Naviance, but uh, that would be something that's on the college's websites and also um, in our counseling office as well. We have a couple of, of lists um, of colleges that we recommend that we know that we have sent students to in the past that offer excellent supports. Um, so I encourage you uh, to reach out to your child's um, school counselor so we can help to identify schools that offer the supports that um, that your child would need. And That's a great question. One more. This, this past Saturday, we had the college Saturday and I was um, I led the Zoom with um, Sue Christakos and she led the Zoom regarding supporting students with learning differences. I'll put her email in the chat because she does have a list of schools that does, does offer services and you can email her directly. She's wonderful. There's also the recording on the CAC website and she talks about schools there too. So. Awesome, thank you for that, Debbie. Um, 
That would be great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, I have another question in the chat asking how far back the scattergram data goes. Um, I believe we include the last five years because we don't want to go back too far. Admissions trends do change, actually. Um, and so I, I, I even think about my undergraduate institution where I attended Kenyon College um, and what it took at, at that time to be accepted and what it takes now to be accepted. Um, and I've seen um, in my last six years here at Walter Johnson, um, UMD College Park acceptance trends even change in the last six years. So our scattergram data um, it goes back five years. Ms. Latson, there's a related question. It was up higher uh, about now with test optional and test blind schools, will the scattergrams be updated to show because sometimes scores aren't submitted? The new world. That is a good question for our Naviance rep. I'd have to elevate that question to see if um, if they are planning to add um, uh, SAT um, or ACT test optional data in Naviance. That is something that's new, that's emerging. Um, and I don't know that Naviance has, has thought that far in advance yet. So that's a good question. Um, I'll have to elevate that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, so that was the next one. Okay, registration code, we got that. Can scatter... Um, okay, so our scattergrams do not display uh, demographic information. It's only going to show um, test scores and GPA purely. Okay. Okay, so there's a question. It seems like college admissions are not following the traditional patterns in, in this test optional world. Would this factor into how, um, how students and parents use Naviance this year in terms of predictability data? Yes, it does. And um, I am going to recommend that you view from uh, College Saturday, there was an excellent presentation um, and, and Debbie or Debbie, um, you can chime in on the person's name, but the title was about um, the changing landscape in uh, college admissions right now. Um, Shelly Levine. Shelly Levine, thank you. Um, and so there was an excellent presentation on um, kind of how we look at that. Um, and there was a past presentation on, um, on testing that also, also touched on test optional, um, if I'm not mistaken as well, another one. Who was that one by? Maybe Jordan Kranick? Sorry, it was his father. Uh, okay. the, Jordan's father did it. Uh, and I'm trying to, I can't remember his last name. Jordan Kranick usually speaks with us and his father did it last year in this fall when we had that. And that is still, um, those should still be available on the CAC website as well. Sorry folks, the CAC puts on so many amazing workshops on all of these topics. It's hard to keep up with with all the information, um, all, all the great information that's out there. I do encourage you all to go um, to our CAC page of, um, of the Walter Johnson website. Um, all of the presentations have been recorded. Um, and so you're able to go back and access some really great information on all topics related to college planning. Um, okay, so uh, the email address of Ms. Evans, uh, thank you, Debbie, for putting that into the chat. And then there's a question. When should we finish the parent questionnaire and, and student um, self-evaluation? So that would be um, at the end of junior year, um, late spring, summer. Uh, the scattergram feature is available to students all four years of high school. They can start viewing um, admission trend data. <clears throat> So we do offer um, school counselors 
go into the homeroom classes and there are a, a variety of lessons that we do throughout the year. Um, and so we will be going um, into the homerooms and doing these Naviance lessons, but, but we do encourage students uh, to be logging on to Naviance from home and exploring it on their own. Students have access to Naviance at all times. Um, and, and so students are not limited uh, to the lessons that we do um, in school. Um, and students can also set up an appointment with their counselor um, and spend some time one-on-one -on -one exploring Naviance. I know I've done that uh, with some of my seniors um, who are still unsure of what they want to do next year, still questioning um, what path they want to pursue. And so we sit down together and we dig into Naviance together um, and ex explore what's out there. Um, okay. Okay, so there's a question. Is there a task list slash calendar to guide students and parents through the whole process? Yes, we have developed a wonderful, um, everything you need to know about applying to colleges uh, packet resource. Um, and it has that timeline. It has all the documents. It has the checklist there of, of to-do items for our students. Um, and I believe Debbie might have copied and pasted it into the chat. Is that what that link is, Debbie? Okay, um, okay, so um, I can find that actually um, and copy and paste it into the chat. I will stop sharing here. Um, let me see. I will say there was a question, which I, I think I can answer while you're looking at that, about Naviance is focused on courses, GPA and testing, but there's more than that considered in college applications. Are there resources on Naviance that reflect extracurricular planning and recommendations, et cetera? There is to some degree, but a lot of that from the College Saturday, we've had speakers talk about all of those things. Um, in the college admission process, uh, GPA and test scores are not everything, certainly. Um, and students need to offer more to the colleges uh, beyond just their numbers. Um, and that is something that we um, even start with in ninth grade with our students. We have a um, ninth grade counts meeting that we do every year with the ninth graders. And we start there with encouraging them to join um, extracurriculars and clubs and activities of interest um, and explaining to them the importance not only for, for their high school experience, um, but also for their mental health um, and for building their resume. Um, we encourage our students to get involved and make connections um, and make the most of, of their time in high school that they only have once. So. Um, Yes, there is much more than just the numbers. And, and that scattergram just gives um, an opportunity to predict um, possible college admission outcomes. And you know what? I think that um, everything you need to know about um, applying is on the CAC website as well. I think we linked it there. I think it's we put it in the junior parent meeting, didn't we? Yes. So, yeah. So on the CAC website that that. Um, I'll post the link again. There is a meeting we had for junior parents, and that is, um, I'll, I'll get that link up in just a minute. And someone wanted the answer again. Um, okay, um, about uh, the parent and student questionnaires, when should they be done? Any reason not to start them early and update? Um, okay, when should they be done? So 
parent questionnaires and student self-evaluations should be done before your post-secondary planning meeting with your counselor. So at WJ, all school counselors meet one-on-one -on -one with each of our um, current juniors, rising seniors um, in the summertime about, um, about the students' um, individualized post-secondary plans. Um, and so having that, that parent questionnaire um, and student self-evaluation done before that meeting is what we ask. Um, I have had to nudge some of my students um, and let them know that I won't be writing their recommendation letter until it's complete um, if it's not done by the time we meet. Amani, quick question. I'm sorry if you answered it already. Regarding the parent questionnaire, do you um, use your students' login to enter that information or can you use the, the parents' login? I, I personally have used my daughter's login. I did it, but um, I didn't. So the parents can have their own um, Naviance parent account that you can log into and complete the parent questionnaire. But I do know some parents that just log into their student's account um, and just complete it that way. If that's easier, that's completely fine. Either way, the school counselor can access what you've written. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I did get a direct message question. So the link that um, I copied and pasted into the chat above, that is the, that's the link um, to the juniors, uh, what you need to know between now and applying to college resource guide. Um, uh, that's gonna take you to that slideshow. Um, and the link is embedded in there. And I can do you even one better, um, I can get, just to the document and send that to everyone. Um, so what you need to know. And Ms. Latson, someone wants to know if the parents and students accounts are connected. Yes, yes, they are connected. So when the parent, when you're putting information in, it's going in your student. So I'm telling them, it, it, you, when you fill out your parent questionnaire, that's in your student's account so that you don't have to, the counselor doesn't go to two separate accounts. They go to one account and find the information. Correct. It's all linked, <laughs> like synergy. And the students are, since they start this in middle school, they're much more familiar with this than the parents. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, students start these activities in middle school and they should be um, uh, uh, familiarized with it. Um, but we do remind our students each year because I have gone into homeroom classes and students um, look at me with, you know, wide eyes, uh, like a deer in headlights when I say Naviance. I'm like, remember, remember guys, remember this great tool. <laughs> um, so our students, um, you know, sometimes need reminders, but we do, um, we do use this ongoing. And just one parent to other parents out there. I, I yeah. learned the hard way. So I suggest as a parent going on early and just kind of playing around with it, you learn so much just by going through each subject topic. So when it comes time for your junior year, it's not so scary <laughs> and shocking. So definitely go in, play with the scattergrams, uh, pretend you're the student because most likely you're gonna help your student as well. Um, so that's a recommendation I can give uh, since I just went through it. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Um, and I would echo that as well. I, I encourage students and parents to just go in and play with it because Naviance really does have a lot of excellent features, um, you know, and <clears throat> just spending the time to kind of poke around um, is, is really helpful. It is. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Well, um, I want to thank you all for being here today. Oh, shout out to Lynn Jerosi. Okay. North Bethesda Middle School counselor. 
We love our school counselors. Hi there, Lynn. Um, and she can attest that the students start Naviance lessons in middle school. Um, and we support that work through, through high school. Um, so thank you all for being here uh, this morning. And um, I encourage you to spread the word uh, to those friends that you have um, who might not have been able to attend at this time um, uh, to watch the recording. So thank you all. And please fill out the survey so that we can make sure if there's things we need to update and modify. And Oh, and Ms. Evans already responded to someone's request for access. CWJ rocks. Miss Evans is on it, okay? <laughs> All right, everyone. Honey.